Right, so the next side that's coming on is um, Dan John. Uh, I was in Horsell Down in first year, and he's one of the very few people I've known since um, I first came to Exeter University, so I'm really excited to have him play here. Um, yeah, he's a great guy, I really enjoy him. So, um, everybody give it up for Dan John! <laughs> Wow, this is a good night so far, isn't it? Yeah! Yeah! Have to, uh, my name's Dan, as Mel said. I have to be careful uh, how I introduce myself at this gig, because uh, on Thursday I did a gig up at St James's Park, the, uh, the football stadium, and I introduced myself as, as Dan, the, uh, the current manager of Exeter City Football Club. Um, and they just looked at me a bit bemused and confused, and it, it took me a moment to realise that's because, of course, that's, that's not real life. That, that is, in fact, what I do on Football Manager, which uh, two things I get confused quite a lot, very, very easy. Anyone here ever played um, Football Manager before? Give it yeah! Anyone here who's played Football Manager ever let it consume their soul? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it, it's the one thing in the world that can make me more uncontrollably angry than anything else I've ever experienced. Right? Someone could, could burgle my house and take all my things, bar football manager, and, you know, I'd be like, that's, that's all right, that's just things, you know. My dad could run off with my girlfriend and I'd be peeved at first, but, you know, if they love each other, that's fine. If, however, I were to lose to Swindon Town 2-1 after conceding a, uh, a last-minute own goal, I'd go, fucking ape shit, right? You know, I'd chuck things around, i use language that would make Gordon Ramsay's uh, blush, you know, which, which, is, which is saying something, really. But yeah, it, it turns, it changes me, you know, and I spend a lot of time on that. That, that whole thing sucks you in, doesn't it, that game, you know, and, and do, if you do play as much as I do, please don't look at the screen that tells you how long you've been playing it. Because my, I looked at mine and it told me the current, the current game I'm on, not all the other ones I've got to say, the current game, I've been playing for six days. Now, if you're not, if you're not like, comf uh, if you don't know this format, that's not, that's not on and off over the last six days. That's 144 hours of playing that I put in, right? Essentially, I've been, I've been playing that game for, for six whole days of my life. I spent six whole days sat in my room shouting and swearing at people who aren't there, which is, which is worrying because essentially that's Alzheimer's, right? And I'm, I'm 21. Imagine what I'm going to be like when I'm 80, okay? <laughs> I mean, that's why Football Manager is the whole reason I don't take drugs. Because if a single computer game can make me genuinely believe I am the manager of Exeter City Football Club, imagine what LSD would do to me, right? <laughs> that would be messy, right? Okay, let's get back to the real world. Has anyone here ever been made um, redundant? <laughs> Wrong yeah. Down, man. yeah, well, just me then, okay? Yeah, I, it took me by surprise as well, because, you know, I thought my, my job was pretty safe. You know, it, I was working for a high street institution. It had been around for over a hundred years. It survived the Great Depression. I thought a busy credit crunch, I'd be fine. <laughs> Good old Woolworths, yeah. <laughs> like, I tell you what, I, 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 really, I really do miss that place. I particularly miss the, uh, the freaks that we used to get in. You know, the ones that come in and spend half an hour smelling the Worth It soap? <laughs> now, the Worth It soap doesn't have a smell because it was, it was 30p. It was barely soap. Right, it's that sort of soap that gets you more dirty than when you put it on. Which I always thought was a great marketing tactic. Because, you know, if you put soap on and your hands are dirty, the first thing you think you need is soap. Which, <laughs> which these people did come and buy. Um, I was there as, as walls were shutting down. And I tell you, you know your job isn't all that safe when the main Christmas offer you have on in your shop is the uh, buy one get one free offer on the chairs from the staff room. <laughs> It made a good Christmas present for my nan. You know, I, I accurately recreated the entire staff room in her living room, which was a bit impractical for her, but it's nostalgic for me, so, you know, every cloud. Uh, uh, I was actually working when my store shut down on the very last day, and in the very last hour, we were told to get big sack bags and fill them with whatever was left in the store and to sell that for a pound. Now, it's amazing how much utter shit people will buy if they're buying it for a pound. Right? Not literal shit, obviously. We hadn't reached that stage of corporate desperation where we were shitting in bags and selling it. But if Woolworths Management had had their way, we would have done. I filled one bag with, um, entirely with high school musical posters for a joke, right? and brilliantly ended up selling it to a man who was famous in our town for being homeless. Now, what a man who doesn't actually own any walls was planning to do with 40 posters of Zac Efron? I have no idea, right? But he was overjoyed. <laughs> One thing I have realised recently um, is that my track record of jobs is, is pretty similar, in fact, almost identical to my track record with relationships. Um, you know, I spend ages trying to get one, 
um, you know, I get some interviews, but generally fuck them up because I come across a bit keen and too desperate. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, and then when I finally do get one, it's never really the one I want, and then, you know, within a month I end up getting the sack. So... <sighs> and that's what I'm looking for. I like you, I like you. Um, no, um, it, it's alright. Um, I do say that, that I do struggle to get past the first day. I don't know if anyone else has that problem. My housemate says it's because I don't pay for the, the meal, the girl's meal. Now, I don't think that's true, right? Because I like to think of myself as a modern man. I'm all for equal pay in the workplace, right? I just think that should extend to equal pay in the restaurant. That's all, right? Who's with me? Yeah. Yeah, there's some guys in, there's some guys in. <laughs> And though, to be fair, I do have traditional values as well, you know, and I try to combine them sometimes and make a, you know, make a deal with my date. You know, I'll say, I'll, I'll happily pay for your meal if you'll just agree and promise me that your parents will pay for our wedding. Which goes down very badly on the first date, I find. Um, I thank my housemate Jamie for that advice. Actually, the, the worst first date I've ever had um, taught me a very important lesson, and I feel I should pass it on. Um, please, if you're going on a first date, never tell your date about your medical conditions, right? It's not a great time to bring it up, especially over a meal. I went to a restaurant with one girl, and she started taking some pills, and I thought, I'll be polite, you know, I won't ask about what that's for. But then she proceeded to tell me very loudly that it was, in fact, for her skin condition to stop her, and I quote, face from flaking off, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, un unfair, particularly because I was eating pastry at the time. <laughs> no, fair to say, I did not let that relationship last more than a couple of horrible months. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. That joke, that, that joke appalls me. <laughs> Oddly, though, what I do find is that, that my biggest problem with jobs is that I always turn up late, yet my biggest problem with relationships, apparently, is that I always arrive early. Which... <laughs> I hate that joke as well, but <laughs> I find I can't win with those. <laughs>